Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt. So I want to go over a concept that answers a lot of questions and it settles a lot of confusion in the holistic healthcare field. And I'm going to explain uh, based on a graphic that I made a few years ago. I'm going to show this graphic right now. And this is what it looks like. You may have seen it before, but I want to focus on this blue circle, this very first circle right here. Three major causes of chronic illness, toxins, pathogens, and excess sugar metabolism. There's also two minor causes, but we're going to ignore those for now. So in those three major causes, let me move this to the side. We can, we can have um, too much of one of those three causing immense destruction. And you can have a lot of another and none of the other two and have like no problems whatsoever. So as an example, I know a person, he's in his 80s and he eats a lot of sugar. He's not diabetic. He's actually quite healthy. And he's not overweight, maybe a little bit, but he's very active. His brain works really well. And I would say that he doesn't have much in the in terms of pathogens and toxins in his body. Yeah, he eats a lot of candy um, every single day, but his body's able to handle it. And that's just how it is. Now, in the low-carb community, which I'm a huge fan of, I've been low-carb since 1999, um, I would have him change his diet if he were my patient. And that might prevent something in the future, some you know bad disease condition. But yet he's in his early 80s already, and he doesn't have this horrible disease condition that you might expect that he would have. Now, in my example, I've been eating low carb for a long time, and then I had an overwhelming amount of black mold from living in a moldy house and working in a moldy office. So when it comes to the, um, I had a lot of toxins, that's the mycotoxins from mold and then the pathogens that would be mold, but yet I was very low carb. So you can have one, two, or three of these major causes causing destruction of your body. And that's the main point here. It's not high uh, A1C on the lab report, right? Like that is a lab uh, indicator or a sign that there's something wrong. And there's a lot of doctors and I love it and they, sh they need to keep doing what they're doing get the A1C down. I read labs. I want the A1C down below 5.4. I want the blood glucose when you wake up to be 80. I want your VLDL to be less than 19. All of these go high when you're eating a high carb standard American diet. So bring that down by eating a low carb diet. But the worst part about the high carb diet, it's, I'm going to argue, it's the destruction of your tissues. So the high sugar intake is inflammatory. And then you have the destruction of your tissues. And then you have organisms like bacteria. That's the pathogens on this chart here. Organisms eat the dead tissue and return it to the soil. Now, if you have toxins in your body, that also destroys your tissue. So pathogens, excess sugar metabolism, and toxins all destroy tissue. That's the bad part. That's the worst part. Right, so let's not get over focused on low HDL or some other lab test. I mean, it's good to know this, of course. I look at these labs. It's good to know if you have mold, metals, or chemicals in your body. You want to get that stuff out. But the end result of having all three of these causes is the destruction of your tissue. Now what? And now you have swelling of the ankles. And now you have uh, sprains and strains that come too easily. You don't recover from colds very well. Um, your muscles are too sore all the you know too often. These are signs of the destruction of your body caused by these three things. Okay, and you can't just blame genetics or age, air quotes, or stress or personality. Those are the four main uh, causes according to medicine: genetics, stress personality and age but what are you going to do about those four things nothing it's these are the causes there eight there's eight of them metals chemicals radiation parasites virus bacteria uh, fungus and lyme lyme disease those are your eight causes of chronic illness so focus on those so if you have destruction of your tissues throughout your body from an excess of inflammatory sugar foods and processed food with all the chemicals or exposure to lead, mercury, uh, glyphosate, Roundup, agricultural chemicals, herbicides, pesticides, 
that causes destruction of your tissues and your immune system has to do something about it. It's trying to get rid of it. And also the uh, pathogens, of course, your immune system is trying to get rid of it. So when I um, am analyzing a person's body in my office using muscle testing, I'll often find Lyme disease, for example, in the joints, in the muscles from head to toe. I'll find, par I'll find parasites in the gut, in the uh, brain, in the lungs, from head to toe. I'll find fungus from head to toe. These organisms can go everywhere in the body when they're in quantities that are high enough. So picture your immune system now trying to tackle these pathogens from head to toe. And what is the healing cycle? What does the immune system do? It does the same thing for trauma, like in this graphic right here, or uh, chemical assaults. And this it's a healing cycle. So the first part is an increase in blood flow. So increase red, red blood cells, circulation, increase white blood cells to help the immune system get rid of organisms that may enter the skin if you have a cut on your skin. And then you have scarring, and it says right there fibroblast and macrophages in the uh, second graphic. And then it says proliferative stage, that's the scarring. Fibroblast proliferating. So the swelling is now down. So you have an increase in swelling, redness, heat, and then that goes down, and now you get fibers, meaning scars, and then you get um, a calcification. Now, in this graphic right here, I'm showing you a tissue scar of the, you know, like of the skin, and it says remodeling. But let me show you the next graphic, and it's the same concept, except this is for a broken bone. So you have an increase in circulation, white blood cells, red blood cells, swelling, heat, redness. That's called inflammation. And throughout modern medicine, they use the word inflammation as if it's a cause. Inflammation causes fibromyalgia. Inflammation causes chronic fatigue. Inflammation causes everything. But inflammation is not a cause. There is a stressor there. And it could be the trauma, like a broken bone in this case. It could be Lyme. It could be chemical toxicity. What is causing the inflammation? So as you go through these um, six images, there is a gradual decrease in inflammation and swelling. And then uh, the fibers occur, meaning the scars. And then you have remodeling of the bone. That's calcification. So now picture this throughout the whole body. Because the immune system is throughout the whole body. And this is how people age. So they have this continuous assault on their body, whether it's organisms or pathogens or sugar, or a combination of all three. And their tissues uh, are not viable. And then those tissues die and these organisms eat those tissues. And then your body's going through this healing process from head to toe. So there's inflammation throughout your whole body. And then there's uh, scarring throughout your whole body. Your body stiffens up. And then there's calcification throughout your whole body. Everything gets stiff. Your muscles are stiff. You can't turn your head as well. You get stiffening in the arteries. That's called heart disease. You get stiffening in the kidneys, that's called the kidney stone, uh, or sclerosis, um, arthritis in the joints, uh, gallstones, a sluggish liver, the bile isn't produced in quantities sufficient to digest food, and then, you di and then you have digestive trouble because your liver is sclerosing, fatty liver disease. These are all caused by the same scenario, this mechanism of the healing cycle occurring from head to toe. I grabbed this slide from a very old YouTube video from a pathology class from a medical school. And this is a standard medical textbook on pathology. And it says, what is death and what is life? Death is irreversible mitochondrial dysfunction. So that is the destruction of the inner workings of every single cell. And there are anywhere from 2,000 to 10,000 mitochondria per cell on average. That's where you get energy from. So when you have toxins and pathogens, they get into the cell, they get into these mitochondria, and they destroy it. The second part is profound membrane disturbances. Here's some examples of membranes that can be damaged by pathogens and toxins and excess sugar metabolism. It could be the nuclear membrane in every single cell. It could be the uh, mitochondrial membrane. There's two of them. There's one inside and one outside. It could be the cell membrane itself for every single cell. It could be the gut. That's a membrane. The blood-brain barrier is a membrane. Skin is a membrane. Uh, around every organ, there's, um, you've heard of myocarditis and pericarditis. Pericarditis is inflammation of the sheath that's around the heart. 
So your body's made of membranes. There's compartments that your organs are sitting in. Those compartments are, are fascia and sheathing and membranes. So that is death is irreversible mitochondrial dysfunction and profound membrane disturbances. That is destruction of your tissue caused by those eight causes I mentioned earlier. In September of 2021, I did a very profoundly clinically relevant video called Cholera Up Focal Infections. I've mentioned this before in other videos. And I'm talking about um, pathogenic organisms above the collar causing problems throughout the rest of the body. Now, then later I did a video talking about organisms hiding out in the feet, the shins, the calf muscles, lower in the body because of gravity during the day. Then you lay down at night and you're uh, parallel or horizontal, I should say, to gravity. And these organisms that were stuck at your feet are now going to other parts of your body, including your brain, your lungs, your heart. So the point is there's organisms that are pathogenic and they could be pathogenic because you're eating a bad diet and they morphed into a pathogenic organism or you've had an unlucky exposure like you went swimming in the lake and you got a lot of parasites that way uh, you swallowed some lake water or you're living in a moldy house that's an unlucky exposure so there's two ways organisms can negatively affect your body and one is that they are good but then they change to bad or you get them from the exterior environment now what do these organisms do they create enzymes that are beneficial for them but detrimental to you. They also create chemicals. It's like they're poop and it's detrimental to you to have these chemicals in your body. Now I have a manuscript from a guy named R.L. Riemann Schneider. He's from Chelsea, Michigan. He was born in 1901, died in 1971. I think I have those years right. His son gave me this manuscript and these are writings he did. And he's just a really smart guy, interested in life, interested in a lot of, of um, subjects. He's the guy that invented the deep freeze. If you have like a, like a chest freezer in your garage that's holding half a cow, for example, and you lift up the, the top like this, it's not like a stand-up freezer, but it, and he, he invented those. So, but in this manuscript in 1947, he wrote three things that bacteria do, three principles. I'm going to read them to you because um, they're very profound. I have more information on this too, but principle number one, bacteria can and may be the source of a disease producing factor which might be like enzymes which can produce a disease at a point distant from the physical presence of the bacteria involved so you can have an infection here but it's causing heart disease you can have an infection in your ear and it's causing leaky gut which causes arthritis those are examples principle number two the disease producing factors of bacteria are the catalysts again that's like a enzyme enzymes are catalysts are the catalysts that are emitted by the organism and which can travel via the streams of the body to the favorable environment and to the substrate that will permit them to function. The substrate meaning the dead tissue. So these bacteria are releasing enzymes and they go to a favorable environment at a point distant in the body and they land on a place that is compromised. Okay, principle number three. The catalysts or enzymes are exactly specific and are produced by the genes of the bacterium, but which will be a malformation or disease of the human body. As these catalysts or enzymes perform specific function, a study of the abnormal products within the cell will indicate the chemical pathway for the malformation and also the family of organisms which have the same end products in their culture. So the last sentence there is indicating that you can identify the organisms based on what they're producing and then handle it medically for your health care. And the bottom line is he's trying to cure cancer, 1947. And he ran this through a lot of different uh, medical minds at the time, and they all agreed. They agreed that he was correct. Now, what else do these bacteria make that harm the body? There's a bunch of chemicals. There's ammonia, for example. Now, ammonia is uh, very alkaline. It's 11 pH. And that's very destructive to the human body. And a lot of people are trying to get you to eat an alkaline diet. Don't do it. That was debunked by 1910. But that is an alkaline chemical. And what does an alkaline chemical do to your body? It melts it. So alkaline chemicals have a melting energy. Acid chemicals have a fire energy. And what does your body use for energy? It's ATP. And that is a fire energy. 
So you want more um, acidity. What does that mean? It means you have more protons. It doesn't mean that your body is burning up from acid. It just means you have more protons in your body, and that's very beneficial. And the more protons, electrons, photons, carbon that you have in your body, the better off you are. These are the foundations of your body. Did I, did I mention oxygen? This is what melting energy looks like. This is lettuce with several bacteria on it, and it's turning that lettuce into wet rot. So picture this somewhere in your body. People with diarrhea, people with a lot of mucus in their sinuses, um, the gums receding, uh, the softening of tissues like joints, elbow, you know, elbow, knees, and then you get arthritis, and it's just weak. You get too many sprained ankles. That's because your tissues are becoming soft. They're liquefying. Now, bacteria and other organisms turn, return your body to soil after you die. And, and that's what they're doing right here to this head of lettuce. They're returning it back to the soil by liquefying it. So that's what bacteria do throughout your body from head to toe is it liquefies your tissues. And the opposite of that is what I mentioned before, the healing process. The healing process is uh, scarring and then calcification. So the healing process is a drying process. And the wound or the bacterial process is a melting, liquefying process. So this is the battle between you and the pathogenic bacteria. They want to turn you to liquid and you want to remain solid and stout with uh, strong tissues. And when you look at all the other organisms such as parasites, fungus, bacteria, they all make their own liquid. And they you call it mucus or pus and that's their home. They live in that. So you can see videos on YouTube of parasites swimming on the inside layer of the intestines. You can see them going like this along the interior of the intestinal wall, swim, swimming in their own mucus. They, that's their house. It protects them from the immune system, and it gives them mobility. When people get a lung infection or a sinus infection, it's this all this excess mucus in their lungs, and they're trying to cough it up, and it can get so clogged up with mucus that they can't breathe. I have a friend who went to the dentist many years ago, and the dentist broke the drill off and he left it in the gum. And so seven years later, this was discovered. He had tremendous pain and infection. And we're talking 25 years ago. And even now, his bone is receding and he's trying all kinds of things to kill off that bacteria. It's hard to get up in there. And he's using the water pick and using a bunch of uh, natural therapies. He's been through antibiotics, of course. But that just shows you that the bacteria that has been there for more than two decades, they're melting his bone. Of course, his soft tissue too, and his face is kind of like collapsing in a little bit, and you can see it on the x-ray. So the, the goal is to get rid of these organisms 100%, especially from the collar up. You don't want to have any excess mucus. You don't want to have any uh, pus coming out of your ear, itchy ear, uh, congestion in your ears. Uh, receding gums, all these symptoms from here up need to be gone 100%. Then you know that you're not reinfecting your body through the streams of the body. As mentioned in principle two, those streams are lymphatic, arterial, and then down the mouth from the front, like if you're swallowing pathogenic bacteria, or down the back of the throat, such as from the sinuses or ears, the constant drip called postnasal drip. Post means after, nasal means nose. So after the nose, here's the nose. After it, you have a drip going down the back of your throat. So the front of the throat by swallowing, the back of the throat, arteries, and lymph. Those are the ways that these organisms go here to the rest of your body. So you want to tackle all three of these major causes of chronic illness. Detoxify effectively, and then get rid of the bad pathogenic bacteria, and enhance your vitality of your tissues, and some of the, those bad bacteria will pleal more for change back into good bacteria and other organisms, and then reduce the excess sugar metabolism. Now, the importance of that, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this, is that you don't want to have diabetes, and you don't want the excess sugar and excess insulin in your body destroying your tissues. You've seen diabetics where they had their toes cut off because of gangrene, then their foot gets cut off, and their leg gets cut off below the knee. That's just destruction of the, the sugar actually feeding organisms, and that's destroying your tissue. 
or it's the sugar destroying your tissue. Either way, it's bad. So, and it happens on the inside too. It's not just external. So that's kind of like a bigger picture. It, it, it get, hopefully it changes the way that you view your health improvement. You want to see a solidifying of your tissues and yet they're still going to be flexible so you can recover from a fall. You're not brittle. And I do remember seeing a picture of a person who had severe diabetes, gangrene on their foot, their toes were black. They should have had their toes cut off, but instead what they did was a seven day dry fast, meaning no food and no water for seven days. And there was a before and after picture and their foot went from being black to being about 90% healed in those seven days. So in ketosis, in autophagy, with that seven day dry fast, which is pretty severe, but the person did it and recovered their foot. So that's just an example of how they overcame the bacterial um, overload and they made their tissue stronger and they, they combated the pathogens and the excess sugar metabolism. And it exemplifies the battle between organisms that are liquefying your body versus you trying to make it solid and flexible. When an endocrinologist gives a patient insulin and metformin for diabetes, it's not good enough. When a cardiologist gives somebody a statin drug for high LDL, it's not it, not the answer at all. If you have an infection and you're given a seven-day supply of an antibiotic, not good enough. There's more to it than just taking a pill for seven days or, or even longer. You got to tackle specific areas and revitalize the tissue. Revitalizing the tissue means that the immune system of the tissue and the cells is better and stronger. Every single cell has their own immune system. And when I say immune system, people think, well, I haven't had a cold in 10 years. Okay, not good enough. Because you can have uh, like hip pain or knee pain because you have Lyme in there. Or you can have brain fog because you have Lyme or fungus in there. You can have a white coating on your tongue that's fungus. And just because you had a, haven't had a cold in 10 years doesn't mean that your immune system is strong. It could be like non-functioning because of the overwhelming amounts of other organisms in your body. And not just your whole body, but certain pockets. You know, you can have a little bit of inflammation in a lymph node right there, and that's an organism, and later that could be cancer in 15 years if you don't take care of it. Even though you haven't had a cold in 15 years, it doesn't mean that you're healthy. It doesn't mean that your immune system is super awesome and powerful. All right, the bigger picture is a holistic doctor will look at every square inch from head to toe, trying to find an organism hiding out somewhere, whether it's at the bottom of the feet or in your ear. It's not just, oh, I have bronchitis. If you are ending up with bronchitis, there's something else going on that's deeper, some festering infection that uh, needs to be taken care of between medical doctor visits. So keep that bigger picture in mind. Keep in mind the, uh, the need for detoxing the metals because they can kill tissue and the bacteria eat that. Keep in mind of uh, getting rid of other organisms uh, using a ver wide variety of supplements and herbs. Medicine is really good at killing bacteria with antibiotics, but they suck at viruses. They suck at parasites. They suck at fungus, fungi. Um, it's up to you. And, you know, Amazon and health food stores have better supplies of really good therapies to wipe out organisms than um, any hospital, to be honest, in, a, in the big, broad, general sense. And that's why I carry like 900 products in my office. If you need help from me, uh, you can become a patient in the office, long distance or local. You can do a travel package or just be a phone patient. Uh, I have other practitioners in my office. You can call the office. It's right here at the end.